Hello everyone, and thank you for joining us today for our Star Wars Unlimited Q&A slash designer chats. Uh, we went ahead and got some questions from the community over the last couple days, and we're going to be asking it to these wonderful designers I have with me. Uh, if you're new to the channel, let's have everybody introduce themselves. I'm Xander, I am your host. Uh, I'm Danny, I'm the lead game designer for Star Wars Unlimited. Uh, and I'm Tyler, I'm a senior game designer on Star Wars Unlimited. And if you didn't know, you can read it. Oh, not anymore. Oh, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect timing. They did that just to spite you, I think. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, so, yeah, we, we just have some questions that people were asking about design and development of Star Wars Unlimited. We're going to get into some of the details about it, what you love, what you're like, oh, maybe we missed the mark or wanted to mm -hmm. change and things like that. Uh, but before we get into that, we know that we got plenty of questions about OP regulations as well. So organized play, different parts of that. So we wanted to start off, uh, we obviously don't have Corey here, or a member of the organized play team, but we just had a, one small thing that we want to start off with, which is letting you know that we are making a change to part of the tournament regulations. Uh, we received a ton of great feedback from the community around this, uh, specifically around play mats and sleeves. So currently, the, as it stands, the regulation is that it needs to be plain colored um, or Star Wars Unlimited products. So we'll be keeping that rule for live stream games at like your larger events and things like that. Uh, but the rule around that will be changing to just be non-inappropriate uh, uh, sleeves and play mats across the board. Uh, what that means is up to the TO and judge if it's, it's tasteless and everything. But we want to make sure that this is a welcoming community for everybody in the community. Um, and so whether that is a young child or myself, I, I don't want to see certain <laughs> images across me while I'm sitting down there. Yeah. Uh, and so we're going to keep that as part of the uh, rules for the live streams only. Uh, but you can use your own play mats now if you have one that's like your specific, you know, if you're a content creator and you have yours on a play mat, which I saw plenty of this weekend, which is cool, uh, you can do that now for events. I can use my Yoda play mat from when I got second place in the, the Star Wars card game. Yeah, see, you know? that's, I need to win something, so I have a cool play <laughs> Yeah, mat. you got a flex. <laughs> uh, we also heard some feedback about different uh, other parts of the tournament regulations, and at this time we're not really adjusting anything else, but we are open to change in the future, mm -hmm. and we're actively listening to what you all have to say about what we've done so far. Uh, and we hope that this is you know, the first step to uh, making sure that you all have the kind of play experience that you're looking for with Star Wars Unlimited. Yeah. So... Cool. Without further ado on that side of things. That's OP stuff. I don't know anything about yeah. that. Yeah. Let's get into <laughs> game design, the designer chats section. So there are a few leaders in set one that seem to be really good now, but sort of set up to be getting better as more sets come out and abilities sort of sync with different things. Um, are there some leaders that, was this a purpose, first of all, is this a purposeful design choice? And second of all, which leaders are you expecting, you know, you're like, oh, we mm -hmm. built them because we knew that they'd be great as we add more things to this game. Oh, for sure. I think um, we very intentionally knew that some leaders, like, like Tarkin and Leia are the obvious ones, it'll be great in set one because it's so much Rebel and Imperial stuff. Maybe not get quite as many toys in future sets. But on the flip side of that is plenty of leaders who I think have untapped potential. Um, probably my two favorites are Han Solo and, and Chirrut. Uh, Grand, Inquisitor. Oh, Grand, Grand Inquisitor! Yeah, Grand Inquisitor! Yeah, Let's no, go! He's also one of the best ones. My boy! Uh, yeah, the more uh, low power, high <laughs> HP units we get, the better for Grand Inquisitor. Um, but yeah, I think Han is just going to do some really cool things as more yeah. sets come out for sure. And Chirrut's just going to get more lightsabers and upgrades. Give me, give me as yeah. many high health units with raid and or grit on my, on my, uh, on my Grand Inquisitor and we're, we're ready to go. Yeah, um, but yeah, it was, it was, I think, definitely intentional. But we wanted, you know, we knew there would be some who would be the best in the just set one metagame. But we wanted, in future sets, uh, people to have incentive to go back and look at those old leaders and say, oh, maybe now is the time that my Grand Inquisitor deck can really shine. Well, and also you'll note that all the leaders we just talked about were rare. Uh, yes. The common leaders tend to be more focused on the cards that are in the current set because they're uh, optimized for draft. Uh, whereas the rare leaders can kind of do whatever we want them to. And the fact that they are untapped potential in such a small card pool is somewhat intentional mm -hmm. uh, because the things that we want them to be good with are not the kinds of things that you want to stuff all into one set. You kind of want to sprinkle it here and there and then their value grows and changes over time uh, in a way that the common leaders maybe will be less of. Yeah. Yeah, I think, honestly, another good example maybe is Palpatine, although I'm of the opinion that Palpatine is already <laughs> pretty awesome. <laughs> if you're not playing against a super fast aggro deck, you can just go over the top of anybody with, yeah. with Palpatine ramp. Oh yeah, I was playing Palpatine this weekend and it was amazing. Yeah. So much fun. Yeah, super good. 
Uh, so great answers across the board there. And I like the point about rare leaders because I know like Harris and Dula makes sense, you know, right. with a limited number of specters now. But who knows what the future holds? Uh, yeah. The only can and, be better. And, uh, and since you can have multiple different versions of the same character, like we're not even limited to just the, the six specters that we know, right? Yeah. We could have different versions of the same characters. Absolutely. Uh, or whatever nonsense we come up with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so our next question is, what can you tell us about... Uh, cards you've designed around like specific groups in Star Wars such as Inferno Squad or Spectres and how their group dynamics and who those characters are plays into how you design them. So I know a lot of people are like, oh, the Spectres don't have a ton of synergy all together, but wh how do you feel about that with like both of those two teams specifically? Yeah, uh, Tyler, I know you're a big Inferno, sure. Inferno Squad. Sure. Uh, so we, whenever you have these like pre-built teams mm -hmm. uh, in the lore, whether it's Inferno Squad or uh, or uh, the the Spectre team, or the Bad Batch, or uh, or uh, one of the various teams of bounty hunters that you know get together at whatever. Yeah. Um, the idea is you want them to be mechanically synergistic with each other, um, and how much we uh, stream or how much we uh, sh uh, point at that obvious in an obvious way uh, is is kind of up to how we want that dynamic how clear we want that dynamic to be to the casual fan. Mm -hmm. um, so we were very obvious about it with the Spectres. We gave them a trait. We made a leader that says you, can, you should play all the ones with the trait. Uh, we yeah. made multiple Spectres care about other Spectres. We really wanted to push people towards playing the Spectres together. Um, and, but we don't want to make it so that the Spectres are only good with the right. other Spectres, right? So uh, we want Kanan to for instance, work on his own, but be better with his friends. We want Sabine to work with the Spectres, but also to be good in other decks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and so it's, it's threading a sort of a thin line of, well, we want the cards, we want people to have the creativity to put the cards in new and interesting places that maybe we don't anticipate. Yeah. Um, but also we want people to feel rewarded for playing the characters that should go together in the lore. Um, so for instance, that's why uh, Iden Versio and uh, Gideon Hask, for instance, both reward you for defeating enemy units. That's kind of the theme. Uh, or that's why you have some of the specters that say, um, I care about other specters, Chopper, Hera, and, uh, and Ghost, and Kanan. Um, but then you also have specters that don't. Um, and so you can kind of mix and match. Well, am I going to play all the specters? Am I going to play just Kanan and... and and Ezra and Chopper, or am I going to play, right, you can kind of like build yeah. your own team, so to speak. Yeah, I've played plenty of decks that just have Sabine or Ezra and no other Spectres. Mm -hmm. But also like when you're playing with Ghosts and Hera, it's like, oh, I definitely want Sabine and Ezra in that deck. And there have definitely been times where I build a deck and I look at it and I say, oh, this deck already has Sabine and Ezra and, uh, and oh, I forget who the third one was, uh, and Zeb. Oh, uh, Zeb. And then I'm like, oh, should I be playing Chopper? Yeah. Because Chopper yeah. says, have great. another Spectre, and I incidentally already have the Spectres, so sure, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Cool. That makes complete sense. So, the next question is one that I personally loved and was like, yes, we need, we need to do this. <laughs> uh, so, how can I make IG-88 great? That, that's just, that's it. That's it? A very short question. I already think IG-88 is great. Yeah, but that's because like, you, you already played the all one drops deck that makes AG88 great. I mean, yeah, I think he is another good example, though, of cards that get better the bigger the card pool gets. Because right now, there are only so many one drops you can put in your deck. Believe me, I have tried. <laughs> <laughs> but you get two, three, four sets down the road, and you can just completely swarm, have tons of units in play, frequently have more units than your opponent, and when you flip IG, giving raid one to all of them, uh, it's very hard, you'll very end fast. the game really fast. So yeah, I think... Realistically, IG is a leader who needs uh, a little more time to reach his full potential, I think. And also, I think the idea behind IG-88, I mean, this is why he has the stat line he does, is he was always intended to be kind of like a hit you hard, fast, yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I'm here for a good time, not a long time kind of deal. Uh, so the plan in an IG-88 deck, I think, is not to be playing the game on turn seven. Mm -hmm. you're, yeah. You're going to try to win before that. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's, yeah, it's like a fact... 
that uh, if your opponent really wants to beat IG-88, they probably can by just like taking out <laughs> your units as much as possible. But yeah. if you catch some people unprepared where it's like, oh, I'm just going to ramp and draw cards and do my own thing, and IG can come in and like, oh, no, the game's over on round four, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So that's a bit of a spoiler, though, that there's more one-drops coming for IG yeah. in the future sets, right? You're like, oh, yeah, for sure. We weren't supposed <laughs> well, to talk about set two, but there is at least one card that costs one in the set. <laughs> <laughs> we tried really hard not to, but Danny yeah. insisted. Yes, yeah. Danny was like... <laughs> you can't stop me from yeah. talking about one-drop. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. One-drops himself. Uh, so, great answer there. It, and basically, same thing as some of the rares, um, rare leaders that, you know, there's a lot more to come and a lot more that you can build around in the future sets, which is cool. Uh, so the other question is, for the here and now though, what is your favorite two drop in the game currently? I'm definitely going to cheat on this answer oh and gosh. say a two drop that's secretly actually a one drop, which is of <laughs> yeah, course you're Leia a Organa. <laughs> that's cheating. That is cheating. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing better than a two drop that you can play for actually one resource and so you can play another one drop right next to it. And <laughs> yeah, wait a there's minute. also nothing better than a two drop that in the mid game or the late game, Exhausting when your opponent's it. like, haha, here's my Darth Vader with a lightsaber, or here's you know, my Fett's fire spray or whatever, you can be like, nah, that's exhausted. I'm going to win the game now. I just, I love Leia just so much, so flexible. Uh, I'm pretty high on Sabine unit. Uh, oh, yeah. She does a lot of little things that all usually can add, add up to being worth her cost. Mm -hmm. uh, and. I particularly enjoy the 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 feeling of of safety that she gives me when she has friends <laughs> and the friends protect yeah. her. Yeah. Um, it's a it's a a unique effect that no other unit has, uh, and it makes her safer to put upgrades on. Uh, she is a specter for the specter cards. She is a Mandalorian for the Mandalorian cards. She is a rebel for the rebel cards. She gets to do it all. That's a good one. But only a little bit of all of it. A oh, little bit just of a little bit. Of she's like me. She's a she. She does everything everything well. No one thing great. Just a lot of little things well. You know. <laughs> Fair. I would have to say mine is Piet. Uh, Ooh, I, that's a good choice. Actually, Piet, yeah. that's a good choice. It's, it's, if you played me recently, run with Palpatine. <laughs> uh, those space units are in trouble when uh, Piet's on the board. So I yeah would I would have to say that one as well. It's just super fun, but. Leia, once you said Leia, I was like, yeah, that's that's probably She's a better so answer. The number of times I've gotten to play Leia and then say, sit down, to whatever <laughs> yeah. their leader is, it's just so satisfying. It's so good. Yeah. Uh, especially so, when it's Vader. Especially like, yeah. when it's Come on, Vader. Dad. Sit down, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the next question we have is, are there any decks and archetypes that you found to be really strong in testing that people have not really run into yet that you might want to like hint at right now? Or is there anything that people have found now that it's in their hands and in the public uh, that you were not expecting to be as prevalent as it is currently. Oh yeah, well there's Good one question. card for sure. Oh yeah. I was so far away from thinking that Steadfast Battalion was even going oh, to be yeah. close to playable and now oh, people yeah. are jamming it in all their main decks. Nice. Yeah, uh, yeah, that Twitter card was like, I looked, at the I looked at the cycle and I was like, uh, okay, the two cost red one probably doesn't have enough stats. The two cost yellow one probably, I could see an argument for that. Uh, the um, I, uh, the 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 other the other two, and then the green one. I was like, this one of all of them has to be the worst one because it's so slow. And now, clear here I am being <laughs> yeah. being wildly wrong. Yeah, Energy Conversion Lab makes uh, everything pretty. <laughs> makes fast. everything better. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know if there's anything that I'd say that uh, is just, like sitting there waiting to be discovered necessarily. <laughs> I've definitely been surprised going back to Palpatine that people aren't turning to Palpatine more because I do think. Even in set one, he's really good at beating any of the like not really fast aggro decks. You oh, know, yeah. if mm -hmm. if you think your metagame is going to be a lot of the slower mid rangey decks, like he just you can ramp, you can play giant stuff, you can go over the top, and he has like a decent you know like but with the Yalaran and reinforcement walker, like you can weather the storm a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, th I think he's really, really strong. Yeah, repair. If you're playing with uh, vigilance, <laughs> I was told repair wasn't as good, but I believe in it. <laughs> I've been playing mono green just because nine ramp cards. Mono green. No, you just, mono, you yeah. just double ramp wow. every game. It's like Bold. there you go. He switched Bold. his deck halfway have, through the weekend fun. just to go mono green. Wow. Last weekend. Yeah, it was pretty. All impressive. right, I respect that. I respect that. Uh, we also got a question similar to this, which is: Is there a card that you people you feel that people are sleeping on its abilities, or just feel like it's not getting the use that you thought it might be? I am continually shocked that there's not more Millennium Falcons running around. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like I, that card is so good. It's good in 
your mid-range decks, like it can attack smaller units, it can defeat take damage, range. bounce back to hand, play it again, yeah. like over and over. And in your aggro decks, it's just the reach is incredible. It just ends you the know, game just immediately. like, oh, I thought I'd stabilize the board. Whoops, here's a here's a three four ready unit. I surprise strike for six, you're dead. <laughs> um, yeah, like we def I personally I think we expected probably yellow red Sabine to be a more prevalent aggro deck than green red. Um, at least I did. So mm -hmm. I've been surprised to see, you know, not as much uh, yellow in those aggro decks. Yeah, I don't know. I've been pretty high in green red as a color combination for, for set one for a while. It's uh, a good one. It's a good one. But I, I agree that the Falcon is probably one of the best cards, if not the best card in the first set, just okay. like on its own. Mm -hmm. um, so fair. Maybe yeah. it will have its day. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe. Who's to say? Who's to say? <laughs> Certainly not me. Well, on in addition to this of like what you thought people would be playing, what are you two playing when you show up to your local store right now, or when you do a designer duels at an event? What what decks are you bringing currently? Uh, yeah, so we just got back from an event, um, and as you mentioned, I, I was playing Mono Green Pelt for a bit, uh, just because it's fun and easy, and you know, <laughs> you just get to play giant easy? stuff. Easy, yeah. easy, yeah. Just I like, don't know about yeah, that one. calm down, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you just play a Devastator, and the game's over. And it's cool. Um, <laughs> All we had to do was get ten weekend, resources. Yeah, most of the yeah, it's trivial. <laughs> uh, <laughs> trivial. <laughs> for oh you make me feel so bad for playing Palpatine. It's like, all right, all right, all right. Easy I gotta, deck. I got to get my GI and Sabine decks out. Yep. Punish you for saying that. <laughs> you know, I will say about that. Um, but for most of the weekend, I was playing my absolute favorite deck to play in all of set one, which is yellow, red Cassian Andor. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Bunch of one drops, uh, green squadron A wings, Falcons and red threes, and, and Cassian decks wing better than my Cassian and deck. K2SOs. I'm and sad about it. Yeah, it's just, it's so fun because you can go really aggressive. You're playing all the aggro cards. You've got Sabine, you've got the, the other one and two drops and Falcon, yep, yep. and you can just, against a control deck, you can just win really fast. Uh, but you also have Cassian's card draw to like really grind the game out. Uh, so if you go against a deck that's like faster than you, or that you're worried about, um, you know, just like racing you, you can just, you know, Greedo can trade really well, and yep. so can Falcon, and so can a lot of your cards. You can just trade off units early on, leave one thing in play to draw a bunch of cards with Cassian, and then suddenly you get to round five or six, and it's like, well, I have five cards in hand, and you have none, and the board's pretty even. So I, th I, I think, think I get good. the edge from here. I think we're good. Yeah. Do you play Partisan, Partisan Insurgent in that deck? Uh, I've raid, gone back and forth. Two? I was playing a couple copies initially. I trimmed some. I am on Pirated Starfighter now, which is awesome, because I don't think people are expecting spicy. space enough. That's um, spicy. Especially that's people spicy. are really using like the 3-2 shielded yeah. to um, deal with space, and it's not good against Pirated that's, um, that's That's a thing that I, that I was eyeing at the beginning of when the set first came out and people were just starting to talk about the metagame was was how much are people respecting space? Because in my experience, people never respect space enough. Yeah. Uh, so the, yeah. the way to win the space lane, uh, I think, is a really st uh, uh, powerful strategic advantage that you can leverage if you can yeah. figure out how to solve that puzzle. You win a lot of games with Cassian just going space while they go ground and have a couple of opportunistic, like, waylay to bounce the unit back to hand or mm -hmm. Leia do you, do you to outmaneuver? exhaust. Uh, I don't know. Oh. So what I was going to say, the thing I love about Cassian is you get to play a bunch of tricks. Like you can play like <laughs> yeah. a couple copies of like, three copies of Surprise Strike for sure, but then like sure. a couple copies of Waylay, um, maybe Bamboozle, maybe Heroic Sacrifice, maybe Shoot First, like various different tricks. You draw enough cards that you can still like play a bunch of units in the early game and have whatever trick you need for the late game. Yeah. I love Sneak Attack K2SO, that's my favorite play of all time. <sighs> People think don't think they're in danger, and oh. then you deal seven damage to their base for three resources, <laughs> and they realize they're in danger. I will Speaking say, of Millennium Falcon surprise strike. Yeah. yeah. I will say, I was feeling really good this weekend. Palpatine was doing his job <laughs> in some games, and Danny's eventually like, hey, well, let's sit down, and you can play Palpatine <laughs> versus Cassian. And there was we played two games, and then I gave up. Uh, <laughs> Which is one of them I didn't even have damage on his base. Oh, uh, it was that bad. well, yeah, you're playing Palpatine. Though. Yeah, that's Palpatine. like whatever. Uh, so yeah, you're not going to deal damage until you get to ten resources. Yeah, I got a, <laughs> I got a plan and I never got there. Yeah. Uh, my deck is uh, my primary deck is Grand Inquisitor, green, uh, sorry, red, yellow, uh, very similar to your Cassian deck, but with the plan yeah. of of winning fast instead of uh, having the card advantage to to end the game early. Um, there are a lot of three power yellow units specifically that can take damage a bunch, uh, yeah. whether it's Boba Fett, whether it's the, the shielded um, TIE Defender, uh, or whether it's those red units that, that get to uh, raid two or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, 
And so I, you can just very consistently just put some dudes out, hit them, hit them again. Once they stabilize, you have a comes into play ready seventh sister with, with saboteur. Uh, Not bad. Yeah, 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 it's very satisfying. Nice. Uh, we also had someone, I think this is a great follow-up question to you know, the obsession with doing a space-based deck. What is your mm -hmm. advice for people that are trying to build more space-heavy decks besides just outmaneuver? Sure, uh, <laughs> have a plan for the ground arena. Most mostly. Yeah. Uh, my preference personally is, is Sentinels. Uh, echo, echo based defender is a, I love me a, a good echo based defender. Um, and if you're a heroic deck, I guess you could play Obi-Wan. Um, Gamorrean Guard. Gamorrean Guard if you're really bold. <laughs> Which actually I guess a lot of space decks are going to be yellow. So yeah. Yeah. Your, yellow, your, your pirated starfighter turns on your Gamorrean Guard. Yep. Yeah, I do um, think yellow red is probably the best space set combo in set one. Oh, really? Oh, almost certainly. Yeah. Well, but that's because green squadron A wing is so good. Green squadron A wing is fantastic. Yeah. What about green red for heroism? So I those? love Bright Hope. Yeah. More than any other card in the game, but other yeah. than that, green doesn't have a lot of. I mean, they got uh, Star Viper as well. Star I guess. Viper, yeah. oh, well, solid. and the issue with green red space decks right now mm -hmm. is that all the good green space units. Uh, are defensive in in nature, fair. yeah. And if you're fair. trying to build a space heavy deck, uh, that deck is going to you're 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 in assuming that you're going to be racing your opponent mm -hmm. because they're probably on the ground, um, and so defending in space is less important if your deck is mostly focused on space. Makes sense. Whereas you need to defend on the ground, yeah. and so on. Yeah, fair. Wing leader, another fantastic space unit. Oh yeah. Green squadron A wing into wing leader. We'll just, oh yeah. We'll get you there. That, just, <laughs> that, that wins some games by itself. Yeah. Oh yeah. 100%. Uh, so our next question we have was, does the game feel dramatically different nine sets in? Uh, or do you <laughs> think that a set one deck might be able to compete still with uh, sets one through nine deck? That's actually a very interesting question because yeah. the answer is yes, I think. Like, it does feel dramatically different. Yeah. There's, There's uh, no even one in which sets it doesn't. two and sets three, the deck building options and the mm -hmm. possibilities for what you can do open up so much. Uh, it's so incredibly different. Uh, you might, even say that, you might even say it triples the number of options. You, you might <laughs> even say that, but I wouldn't. Um, <laughs> but with that said, I think it's, we found it to be true that a lot of the set one cards, and even set one like leaders and archetypes, mm -hmm. stay relevant, oh, at yeah. least in our testing, have stayed relevant in the metagame, uh, even as they pick up these new cards from future sets. Uh, like, like, a lot of the set one cards are still going to remain really strong. I would say, we're, we're like in the middle of... of uh, playtesting year two content, right? Mm -hmm. And and Leia still matters. Tarkin still matters. Uh, these are leaders Look, that you would think are yeah. just heavily focused on set one. Uh, obviously, the decks look different, but they're they're far from outclassed. Yeah, I mean, t literally this morning we were talking about a really strong deck in set five testing, and I was like, oh, you know what would probably beat that? This deck that has. Uh, uh, super laser technician and energy conversion lab and overrolling barrage and yep. like a bunch of these set one cards that, that we know and love. Um, Power of the dark side. Yeah. Oh, Punish them. Yeah. Punish them. Power, Power Punish the dark em. side. <laughs> Very oh, relevant wanna, card. Did in you want to put an upgrade metagame. on your turn one unit? Get wrecked. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. it's, it's more that there's more options rather than it's just you're replacing cards basically as you go through. It's more, okay, I have options to try to change how yeah. some of these cards interact with yeah, things. Yeah, exactly. And, how and it, go. it goes both ways too where it's yeah. like there are, there are decks that are built around set one Palpatine leader that are like, oh, here's a bunch of good cards from set two and three that are really good with Palpatine. Or it's like, here's this brand new leader that makes me go back and look at these cards from set one that I didn't necessarily look at before. And uh, because there are all of these new decks, whether it's new leaders with... Uh, old cards or old leaders with new cards, um, the decks that you have to be prepared to play against are also more varied yeah. uh, and, yeah. and uh, more different than, than what you see in just set one. So there might be a card that you are overlooking in set one that you now come back to because you're like, oh, this card solves a problem that didn't exist before, but now the problem exists, so let me go put this in my deck. Yeah. To be clear, those those green villain cards were going in a deck that did not have someone Boba Fett as a leader. <laughs> <laughs> Put that out there. Uh, we got a good follow-up question, which was, how do you decide which uh, cards go in each set when you're designing multiple sets at the same time? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, mostly because this, the sets are designed in parallel, uh, which means that we don't just design a giant pool of cards and then divvy them out. It's like uh, the, the, the people who are designing 
set four are going to design a bunch of cards to focused on set four's themes, uh, re, you know, doing uh, achieving the goals that they want from set four from a development angle, right? Mm -hmm. Each each set has certain objectives that they're trying to accomplish with the set, whether they're uh, game balance or or play style or thematic representation or whatever. Yeah. Um, and so each set is going to put in cards that fulfill those those specific objectives. Uh, and since the sets have di have different objectives, you're just unlikely to end up with two people designing the same card in back to back sets. Yeah, yeah, it happens from time to time. It does happen. Like a, yeah, you know. Oh wait, set four and set six have the same card, kind of, but with slight variation, um, and they have to figure it out. But yeah, as you said, most of you know the the cards from the Rebel versus Imperial set don't make as much sense in a set that doesn't have that theme. Yeah, makes sense. Cool. So our next question is: Is there a particular piece of the color pie that you are excited to explore more in future sets? Maybe a base mixed with a leader, like oh, I want to see red, green, and explore what those cards do. Um, or is there is there some part of this that you're excited for people to see a different side of in a future set um, that's maybe not represented well in set one? Sure, I'd mm. say in general I'm excited for people to see more of what each color can do yeah. because set one, just by virtue of only being mm -hmm. 200 however many cards, um, could only show off so much of each side of the pool. So you see a lot of the you know red and yellow is very aggressive. You see a lot of the very defensive side of blue. You see a lot of the, you know, the, the ramp and, and stuff in green. Um, and obviously those identities will, will hold for future sets, but we'll definitely see more cards that are like, oh, here's, here's some, you know, uh, really good red control card, you know, red hero control card or something, right? Or here's a side of blue that's more aggressive and it's doing it in a blue way that isn't just like, you know, invalidate red. Base. Yeah, exactly. But it is, it's like, oh, this card can actually like, you know, kind of end the game pretty quickly in blue. That's kind of cool. So I'm excited to s for people to see all the colors kind of branch out more. Um, and there have also been a few times where we stumble upon or come up with new uh, new design space and we're like, mm -hmm. oh, what color does this go in? Or we come up with a, ma uh, a text that we really want in a card and we're like, oh, we're not sure which color this is, so we just decide. Mm -hmm. And we get to expand into little niche corners of each color's design space, what they can do. Uh, there are a couple there are a couple upcoming red cards that I'm particularly excited to, for people to get to see because they do th something that feels makes sense in red, but you wouldn't immediately think of as that being a red effect. So getting to explore yeah. the aspects a little more in each set is one of the things that you're looking forward to overall? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and it's not like a, a specific objective of like, yeah. we're, it's not, we're not going out of our way to try to uh, learn about or expand what the, the scope of what the colors can do, but just by virtue of making 800 <laughs> cards? Is it 800 cards a year? Like yeah. A lot of cards. Yeah, yeah. we're making yeah. a lot of cards a year, right? 700, 800 cards a year, like, it, it all adds up. Yeah, makes sense. Eventually you stumble on something. <laughs> uh, well, we have another question. This one is about my favorite version of the game currently, which is Twin Suns. Mm. Mm -hmm. And so they asked, uh, well, <clears throat> they've noticed that a lot of games don't go past turn five. Was this a specific design choice for Twin Suns, or was this something that's just due to small card pools and you know the games will go a little bit longer later once mm -hmm. there's you know additional sets to mix in? I think I, I have two thoughts on this. And you might have some more as well. One is uh, I think it, there definitely was a design choice that we didn't want Twin Suns games to be really really long. You know we didn't want them to drag out for multiple hours. So keeping the gameplay relatively fast was definitely a goal. Um, with that said, I, I have been fascinated the way that Twin Suns games have played out in the real world versus how they often played out in our testing, which in our testing, people were very cagey and very political, and like you didn't want to make a move to like push someone towards elimination unless you were you knew confident you could, you, that you, you, confident could, you could win. win. Yeah. Um, so it led to a lot of like, yeah, let's kind of wait and see, and I'll wait for my moment to strike and make my big move. Um, it, which it, I think did make the games, on average, last at least a round longer. Well, and it, uh, it also yeah. resulted in the first half of the game was the first wh however many rounds, and then the last half of the game was yeah. the last round. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's interesting. I'm curious how the the uh, overall Twin Suns kind of meta game will develop yeah, in right? terms of as people will people start to try and be you know. See games play out where it's like, oh shoot, I, I went, for, you know, I attacked Xander a bunch and then it, mm -hmm. it came back to burn me. Will there be more of like, I'm gonna play it safe and like just take a little tiny action and wait to make my big move? Um, so I'm curious. I don't know. 
Uh, I mostly wasn't involved in the in Twin Suns development, um, so I just have less visibility on on what how it went right and and what those games were like. Um, but most of what I would say is just that our priority was on the games not being long. So yeah. uh, to yeah. a certain extent, every round adds more time to your game, uh, and we want people to be able to play multiple games. So yeah, absolutely makes sense. All right, so we wanted to keep this. Uh, Stream a little shorter, so we got one more question. This is one that I wrote personally because I was <laughs> I was excited. Xander to hear about had it. questions right. too. I have questions as well. <coughs> so sometimes I like to bring it onto the stream, uh, but we talk a little bit about like some of the designs that you've done that you're most excited about, things like that. Uh, we know like I am your father, uh, different cards like that. That you, it, uh, Jeremy designed that one, correct? Yeah. yeah. And so Jeremy yeah. always talks about that's, how that's excited Jeremy's he was about that. It's a very yeah. Jeremy one. Uh, but is there a card that someone else on the design team designed in set one that you are really proud of or really excited that's in the set that you did not have a hand in? You're like, wow, they that really nailed it. Else that someone else designed. someone else designed, so not you. Yeah. Because we talked about some of the ones that you've you've designed yourself. So yeah, I would Yeah, I thought you were giving me a platform to talk about Force Lightning, but if, if I, you want to know about Force Lightning, go read my Twitter. I, gonna, <laughs> I, I thought you were giving me a platform to talk about how awesome Jeremy's design for I'm Your Father was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I used that one as an example. I'm so yeah. sorry. We talked about that card uh, so many times. We yeah, have, yeah, we have it's, them. yeah, yeah, great design. Um, another one that Jeremy designed for the Luke Invader starters yeah. that Oops. I love is Admiral Mahdi. Oh, mm. I thought you were going to say R2 and 3PO. Oh, I do love R2 <laughs> and 3PO too. too. That Actually, was also oh, Jeremy. God, I love R2 and 3PO. That was also Jeremy. <laughs> what I love about R2 and 3PO is that um, having watched so many people play demos of this game, you'll see them draw one or the other and be like, oh, R2-D2, that's kind of a cool effect. I can like manipulate my deck. Okay, cool, cool card. Or they'll draw 3PO first and be like, oh, I have to guess stop my deck. That's kind of fun. Well, maybe it's two, you know? And they seem like they're totally like independently cool, interesting, fun designs. Mm -hmm. And then that moment when someone sees them both together and it's like, oh, they're best friends. <laughs> <laughs> you they do the R2 thing and you do the 3PO thing. It's such a great moment of just like uh, uh, discovery of like learning, oh yeah, these go to, even though R2D2 doesn't say the word C3PO anywhere in his card text, that you look at those two cards next to each other and you're like, oh yes, this is perfect. Um, yeah, I do love R2 and 3PO. I was going to say Mahdi is another one I love yeah, yeah. As, for similar reasons. It just like, creates these big, exciting moments and asks you, it asks you to like, get kind of creative as far as how am I going to make sure that I defeat Mahdi at the right moment to get my big swing in? Because it's so easy to play him out and your opponent takes him out and he did nothing, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it so really... Many, like happens he, so many times. Yeah, he so, uh, so beautifully plays into the back and forth actions that are like the heart of the game where finding that spot where I can play Mahdi uh, such that I'm going to ready something really good and my opponent won't be able to stop me from doing that. Mm -hmm. um, but like knowing my opponent has an action right after me, so I can't just play him out right away. Mm -hmm. But if also if I, I wait too long, my opponent could stop me in a different way. Yeah, it's, it's a great card. Love that card. Uh, I think two cards that, that I was particularly happy with um, that I don't remember who designed them, but I think it was also Jeremy. Uh, <laughs> so good job, Jeremy. Stream. Good yeah, job, Jeremy. Uh, uh, is, Jeremy. To be fair, the three of us designed most of the cards for yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is uh, Death Trooper and D Director Krennic. Um, Death mm. Trooper was a pretty early like, oh, what's a what's an interesting cheap blue unit that that does a does a does a removal mm -hmm. um, that also rewards you for playing grit because grit is is a, a theme of blue, right? Um, and so we came on the. Uh, Enters play, deals two damage to a friend and an enemy. Um, and the card turned out to be way better than we initially thought it would really be. Good. So we're like, oh, this is a cool card. We're, let's yeah. make this the Death Trooper, right? Yeah. And also super thematic for it being a Death Trooper, mm -hmm. right? Because he shows up and then the Death People. <laughs> um, and then at the time that we did that, uh, Krennic did something else entirely. He had some other yeah. build around that was interesting, um, but just different than what he does now, does now. And at one point we came to the conclusion that specifically because he was a draft leader, we had to change what his design was. Yeah. And Jeremy was like, you know, this Death Trooper here deals damage to friendly units. What if Krennic rewarded you for having damaged units? And we're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and we never went back. It was great. Yeah. Those are really great. So Jeremy, uh, this, is, this is just the Jeremy hype stream. Unfortunately, he's not here with us today. But yeah. Yeah, amazing designer, obviously. It's the, so, hype, it's the hype stream because he's not here. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. <laughs> if he was here, we couldn't gas him up like this, is what we're saying. <laughs> All right. Well, it looks like we've answered a lot of the hanging questions here in the, uh, in the stream. Um, but look forward to hearing what streams we have coming up. Uh, we'll be announcing that next week. 
and we have some really fun things in April and I'm excited to uh, get to chat more about what's to come. So thank you all for joining us today. We had a great time uh, sifting through some of the questions and be sure to let us know what uh, streams you'd like to see in the future as well. Into the future. <laughs> we'll see you all next time. Thanks for joining.